Today we laugh a little bit less because, well, people being someone else online is quite serious. People being someone else when they get behind a computer screen is, is really uh, a problem. But, but let's just be honest, being one person in one place and being one person in another place isn't a new thing. This has happened long, long uh, before the internet came around. We call it putting on different masks. We, we have the church mask that we put on on Sundays, and then the home mask, and then the work mask, and then one mask for a certain group of friends, and southern, another mask for a certain group of friends, and, and then we have the mask that we put on online. And when we're able to hide behind a screen name or something like that, we, we feel invincible, and so we take on a, a whole new persona when we go somewhere else. And, and there's a danger in being so many different people to so many different people. In the middle of this series called March Madness, we, we want to talk about the fact that switching who we are and changing who we are all the time is really just driving us crazy. Because we lose our identity when we change our identity so often. We lose our identity when we have to be or we try to be someone different depending on who's around us or who's reading what we write or who it is that's influencing what we're doing. We, we change so often that sometimes we lose ourselves. We see in Genesis 1, very first book of the Bible, we're probably on the very first page of your Bible, it says something very important about us. It says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. We see throughout the, uh, the account of creation, God creates, and He creates things that are beautiful and things that are useful. And the Bible tells us that everything that was created was for Him. But there's a designation when it comes to us. It says God created us in His image. Throughout the Bible, it talks about God creating us individually, that He knit us together in our mother's womb. So God created you for a, a specific purpose. He created you for a relationship with Him. And to be used by Him to bless others. That is universally what we are all charged with. God created us all in His image. The thing is that when we change based upon who's around us, or when we change online who we are, we start creating ourselves in our own image. What we do is we look at what God has done, and we make quote-unquote improvements. We don't like that he's, he's made us this, and so we project a, a false, you know, a, a lie, basically, that this is who we really are. We don't like that God says certain things in his word, so when we come to church on Sunday, we will believe it, and we will act like we believe it, but then when we go with our groups of uh, friends, we, we let things slide. When we create ourselves in our own image to fit whatever it is that we desire, is it love, is it affection, is it just to fit in? We try our best to change who we are whenever we can so that people will like us, so that we will belong, or so that we will get more likes on a post. And the danger is this. When God sees us, He doesn't see us compartmentalized. Like, when God sees us, He says, well, as long as the church them is good, as long as they come here on, uh, when they lose an hour of sleep and they come here when, when everything's going, as long as that, you know, that's okay. I mean, I don't care what they do in this, this friend circle. I don't care what they do online. As long as the church them is okay, that's fine. That's not the way God, God works. We may change who we are depending on who's around us or what screen we're sitting in front of, but God does not change His standard. Mm -hmm. Because God knows that He created you. He created us. And therefore, what He has created us to do does not change wherever we go or whatever it is that we do. And here in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, says this, For the Word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It, it Judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. 
Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Here's the thing. We think we get away with a lot of stuff. We think we get away with a lot of stuff because of who we're around, because of what we post online, or because that Snapchat disappears in 10 seconds. We think that we get away with a lot of stuff that our parents don't find out about, our husband doesn't find out about. We think that we get away with a lot of stuff, and we think that we can do certain things in certain groups, and because they all don't want it to get out, it's going to be okay if we just do these things. And the thing is that God sees everything. And the standard to which that God is calling us to does not change depending on our atmosphere and our environment. It doesn't change depending on who's around us. It doesn't change depending on what social media platform we're on. God says, I mean, if your keeper says here about God, that he sees everything and we are accountable for everything. And so there is no difference. There is no change. There is not a church me and a this me and a social media me. There's just me. And I am under the authority of God. And I am going to be calling the account to everything that I do. And that means this, that, that when we look at the Bible, it says you should not lust. That means that we shouldn't go and look at other people and say, you know, it would be nice to be with that person. It applies everywhere. So it applies to you searching that certain person's Facebook feed until you get to their vacation photos. It applies that you can't keep your eyes off the person running on the side of the street. There's no separation. No stealing. It means that you don't rob a bank. I think all of us would be like, yeah, yeah that's what's going on. It means that you don't rob a bank, but it also means this. That you don't go and take somebody else's work and then turn it into your professor or your teacher and say, this is fine. It means that you, that you don't watch pirated things that somebody else stole so that you don't have to pay for it. Yes. It means that you don't share passwords of things that you're not supposed to share passwords with so your whole family gets a Netflix discount. But still, it applies to everyone. And so we have to know that the standard that God holds us to doesn't change depending on where we are and what we're doing. And then there's speech. And this is how we're going to spend the rest of our time. Because if there's something that's driving us crazy, it's us talking to each other. Have you noticed we can't talk to each other anymore? We can't. We can't be real, and we can't be honest, and we certainly can't dis disagree and still like the person. Like, we, we can't do it anymore. Imagine this for a second. Imagine that we got to go back in time for a little bit and we show up and the Apostle Paul doesn't freak out and tell us. And he says, what's it like? And so you probably tell him about Chick-fil-A, but eventually you get to, <laughs> we got this thing called the internet. And at any point, at any time, we can talk to anyone in the world. And here's Paul who has to ride a, a, a donkey or a camel or walk everywhere he goes to share the gospel of Jesus. And he says, My goodness, at any point you can talk to anyone in the world. Yeah. So you're using this, right? Like you're using this to share the gospel of Jesus. I mean, I'm sure it's everywhere right now. Like you are using this. And we're like, well, actually, we get recipes. We watch cat videos, and we argue about politics. It's funny, but it's really not funny. We can talk to anyone in the world at any given point, and yet the things that we talk about don't matter at all. We have to make sure that our speech, and what we type, and what we do, is all in line with what God calls us to do. Like I said, it's not... A new thing, being two different people. James actually talks about this in James chapter 3. He says, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? 
My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. James says, listen, here's what happens. You use your voices, you use your words to praise God, and in the very next second, you go and you tear down people who are created in His image. You say one thing that is uplifting to God, and then you go around cursing people and saying things you shouldn't say. And he says, this is what happens. When that happens, whatever is happening gets diluted. If you are praising God and then the next thing you're cursing someone else, your praise gets diluted. It's not fresh anymore. It's the same token. If you go and you go talk to somebody about God, and they're going to say, I'm pretty sure you talk the same way I do, so what's the difference? And you dilute your witness. James says it's got to be consistent. Everything that you do has to be the fact that God saved you. And so your words, you should praise God with them, but you also need to make sure that they're being beneficial to others. And so what do we do? We come and we sing songs about the love of God, and then we go and we spread gossip about things we don't know about. We come here and we read about unity and sing songs about the unity of the church and then we go out and spread false narratives that cause derision. Our Facebook feed says share if you like Jesus and then share if this, this, this political figure is the spawn of Satan. We get on our social media feeds and we post scripture and then the very next thing is us calling someone a name and degrading them if they look different, vote different, or see things differently than we do. Paul says this should not be. This should not be. Out of the same mouth comes praising and cursing. Out of the same Facebook feed comes praising and cursing. This should not be. And so today, what we're going to look at is to look at what we should be thinking about before we speak, and before we post. Now I know that when you talk about the internet, there's a wide variety of people here. There's some of you who can program a computer, and some of you who can't turn your cell phone on. I know. And so these principles aren't just online principles. They're principles about everything that we say and everything that we do. And so the question we ask is, before hitting send or before speaking, I need to ask these things. And the first one is, have I thought about this? How ridiculously simple, and yet we don't do it. Raise your hand if this week you got in trouble for saying something you did not think about before you said it. The preacher's raising their hands. Y'all better not lie. All right. <laughs> Think about the times in your life you've really messed up because you've been instantaneously said something and you didn't even think about it. Have I thought about this? Before I hit sin, have I thought about this? Proverbs, we're going to be in Proverbs the rest of the way. Proverbs 12, 16. It says, Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. There's a lot of fools in our world. We are fools. We are so quick to get so angry and to show everyone how angry we are. But the prudent over self overlook an insult. Did you know that's possible? You don't have to just go be mean to the person who's mean to you. Proverbs 20, 19 says, A gossip betrays confidence, so avoid anyone who talks to them. Do you know why it's dangerous to be around someone who talks a lot? Because if you talk a lot, you end up running out of things to say. And when you end up running out of things to say, you start making up stuff to talk about. And that's when you start gossiping and slandering and lying. So you have to be careful that you're not constantly blabbing, so that you're not constantly posting, because when you run out of things to talk about, you start making it up. And there's a practical application to this. 91% of employers in a recent study, they were found to screen prospective employees' networking sites, and 69% of them admitted that they rejected a candidate because of what they saw about them on a social media site. 
students, listen to this. Out of 381 college institution, uh, college admission offices, Kaplan found that 31% visited social media pages to learn about their prospective students, whether they were alone or not. And so if you are constantly talking and you are constantly posting, you're going to put something out there that is not right. And it can come back to haunt you in this world, much less being held in account by God for what we say. Look what Proverbs 13, 3 says, Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. Proverbs 15, 28, The heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. Proverbs 21, 23, Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Some of you all need to make your cover photo of your Facebook account. Proverbs 21, 23. If you guard your mouth and your tongue, you will keep yourself in the Because when we speak without thinking, we will say things, we will say things about people that are wrong, that are degrading, even if they're true. So before we hit sin and before we speak, we've got to make sure we ask the question, have I really thought about this before I say it? There's the second question we ask. Before hitting sin or before saying something, that's the question, how does this affect someone else? And I know that there's some of you in here who say, I don't care. I don't care how this affects someone else. There's snowflake, there are this, there are that. You should because God cares about it. You should because God cares about it. You should because if you just post about how much you love Jesus, you're giving a false impression of who he is by slandering them and calling them names. You are therefore Christ's ambassadors. So they're going to form an opinion of Jesus based on how you treat them. How does this affect someone else? Proverbs 11, 9 says, With their mouths, the godless destroy their neighbors, but through, the knowledge, through knowledge the righteous escape. You understand what this says? When you participate in the tearing down of other people, you're just like the godless. Proverbs 16, 27, 28. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and the gossip separates close friends. We have a nasty habit of just saying that's just who they are when it comes to people who get into situations, maybe even to churches, just to stir up conflict. The Bible says that's a perverse person. Someone who just sits to stir up conflict. Here's the honest truth that we have to be aware of. And maybe this doesn't apply to you, but it applies to your kids or your grandkids. Bullying Statistics Society Award found that one in three young people have experienced cyber threats online. That's not, I don't like you, that's not your fat, that's, there's going to be physical harm that comes your way. One in three. Over 25% of adolescents and teens have admitted that, or say that they have been bullied repeatedly through their cell phones or through the internet. And half of them, well over, over half of them, do not tell their parents. We're raising a generation of people who think they can say anything and do anything without consequence, and we're raising a generation who are killing themselves because they don't tell it. We have to be better. We have to ask the question, how does this affect someone else? Proverbs 11, 11 says, Through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted, but by the mouth of the wicked it is destroyed. Let me ask you this morning, are your words, are your posts, are your whatevers building a city or tearing it down? Because depending on that, one says that's the upright, and the other one says that it's wicked. There's one more question we need to ask that's this. Who is influencing this? Who is influencing this? Social media has become an echo chamber. You surround yourself with people who look like you, go like you, talk like you. So you believe that everything that's said here and done here works. Everything that's said here and done here is, is right. And we do the same thing in our social circles. We look around. There's very few times that we surround ourselves with someone who, who doesn't just completely line up with our beliefs. And so because it's 
a group think and because everybody else in the group thinks it's okay, we are going to say things and do things based upon somebody else. We're going to try to please them and their opinion of us. Or we're just going to try to make ourselves look good. And in both of these situations, we're going to say things and do things that are completely against the Bible and against what God calls us to do. Proverbs 17, 4 says, A wicked person listens to deceitful whips, and a liar pays attention to destructive talk. I had a preacher growing up who uh, always had these little anecdotes. And one of them said, I can tell what you ate by your breath, and I can tell what you, I surround, you surround yourself with by how you talk. Everything that comes out of your mouth, I can tell something about you. I can tell what your home life's like. Moms and dads, I gotta tell you, we kind of know how you talk because you could talk that way. You know what your home life's like. You know what movies you're watching. We know what music you're listening to. Why? Because we say it. I don't know if you remember the, the television show House. It was on for a few seasons. It was a doctor who was a smart aleck. We, one time before we had kids, before we had kids, um, we would sit around and watch things, and so we binge watched House and just kept watching it and watching it. And like a day later, Lindsay said, "We got to stop." So why, why we have to stop? She goes, "Because you've been a smart dog, like the last 24 hours." <laughs> and it just happens before you even notice it. The things that you're filling your, yourself with comes out through your words. And so no wonder you're spewing hateful things to people who vote different than you because you're surrounding yourself with people who vote like you. So of course you're spewing out hateful things about people who don't look like you because you're surrounding yourself with people who look like you. You're saying things about people who are made in the image of God and you don't care because you're trying to please someone else's standards instead of the God who came to die for everything. We have to ask the question, who is influencing this? And this is why it is so direly important. Listen to the potential of our words. Colossians 4, 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer it. Can you remember the last time we were in a grace-filled conversation? Proverbs 15, 4. The soothing tongue is a tree of life. But his perverse tongue crushes the spirit. You ever built somebody, built somebody up there? <clears throat> Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are like a honey or a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Proverbs 10, 11, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Proverbs 10, 20 through 21. The tongue of the righteous is a choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little value. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but the fools will die for lack of sense. Do you see how important our words are? Because these things are exactly what the world needs. Grace. Life. Words that are sweet and healing. A choice silver, something that is nourishing. The world is not getting that from anything else. But through Jesus we can get it. But it only happens if who you are is consistent. It only happens if we take this word with us everywhere that we go and bring life and speak life into the situations around us. If all we're doing is adding to the noise, we're failing at what we're called to do. And so what are you saying? See, the thing is, God sees you. You. Not the many different versions of you. God sees you. You are made in the image of God. And that goes with you wherever you go and whatever you do. Whether you're online or whether you're in the real world. 
The grading scale never changes. The expectations never change. So this morning, what are you going to do? Are you going to add to the noise or rise above? Are you going to return every insult to another insult? Or are you going to show grace? Are you going to quit talking about that kid you're going to school with? Because believing he doesn't feel good about it. <clears throat> Are we going to speak life? Or are we going to just be like everybody else and tear down? Because as Christians, we're called to something greater. So the worship team is going to come up now. And we're getting ready to sing a song. But today, we, we have a decision to make. And that's a decision to be people who are consistent. To be a people who speak truth and who speak love. And today, today, you know, your preacher's going to do it, so I assume everybody's going to Today, we've, we've got to ask for forgiveness because there are things that we have said that have completely destroyed people. And maybe you didn't care about it, but God cares about it, you should too. So today, we, we come and we ask for forgiveness and we seek forgiveness. But today we also come here and we seek to be filled with God so that the one who is influencing it is Jesus. So it's not the group of people who are around us and it's not a, a bad influences or, or worldly influences. It, it's Jesus. And the thing is that he can't influence the words you say if he's not around. So today I, I invite you to invite him in. To receive the, the gift that he wants to give you, which is the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of your sins. You don't have to hold on to it forever. He wants to come and take that away from you. And so whether you need prayer or whether you today want to make that decision for your, yourself, we invite you to hear this song to do that. They know, we sing this song, they know we're Christians by our love, but they also know about our words. So let that ring true. Let's be standing with Jesus.